Glucose is something that I talk about a hell of a lot. And I've probably done 20, 30 videos over the last year or two on glucose and blood glucose management and what happens when it dips. But I want to go through some of the things that are signs that your glucose levels aren't really where they need to be. Now, we need to have glucose in our blood to shuttle to fuel our brain function. And the trouble is, is when it's too high or stays in the blood for a long period of time and not at the right levels, it can become pretty toxic. And then we lead on to things like insulin resistance and then further down the line, diabetes. Now, diabetes is linked more with obesity. But I've seen many people that aren't obese, aren't overweight, just as severely stressed that are have become type 2 diabetics because of their lifestyle. And we see people that are just pushing fight and fire with fire, just always go, 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 go. And they push their health to the side, ignoring these signs that their blood glucose management isn't where it needs to be. Now, despite me talking about things like constant glucose meters, talking about things like uh, glucose testing, pricking your fingers, making sure your fasted glucose is a certain level, H1AC is at a certain level and all these things or going to the doctors. One of the frustrations I get actually going to the doctors for blood tests is that they'll say your glucose is, is okay. Well, their range of glucose being okay is a lot wider than we need to be optimally performing brain function wise and bodily health wise when it comes to improving our business. And if we don't get this right, we start not being able to show up how we want to in our business. We don't have the energy to show up how we need to in our business. We have energy dips and we just have loads of issues that come into play as a result of having poor blood glucose management. Not only that, they say have a faster glucose, uh, a faster blood test for glucose. Great. But say you wake up at 6 a.m. and your glucose test is at 8.30, the blood test. You've got two and a half hours for glucose levels to change to where they are fasted, which makes a big difference. So if you can get that test first thing in the morning, finger prick or constant glucose, we're going to get a much better marker of where your body is actually at. But there are different things where we have things like hyperglycemia, that our glucose levels is going too high and low, reactive hyperglycemia, where we eat food and our glucose levels change. And then things like insulin resistance, where we're not able to get the right insulin to grab that glucose and shuttle it into the cells where it actually can do the work we need it to do. And if that continues from being hypoglycemic to insulin resistance, then we end up getting down the more diabetes, uh, pre-diabetes route and then diabetic, which can still be reversed most of the times unless we cause severe damage. But we don't want to get that far. And these are signs that your body is actually going down that route with hyperglycemia. These are signs such as you get actual increased energy after meals. Now, despite what people think, food shouldn't give us energy in the way that it makes us feel energetic. It should give us energy in the form of killer calories. So calories are the fuel. Just because you put diesel, gas, petrol, into your car does not mean where it suddenly speeds up. That's the analogy that I always use with people that it should still be, it's not going to perform better as such. It's just going to have more fuel to go further. And that's the same with your body. Another sign is that you need to eat sweets or you have cravings for sweets between meals because your glucose is just dipping and going all over this roller coaster. One big, big sign is that if you miss meals or you go a long period of our eating, you get hangry. And it's not going to be nice to be around you. Believe me, like I've been with, uh, my wife has, has had a hanger outburst. I've had a hanger outbursts in the past. And it's not nice to be around someone. And I'm sure it's not nice to be around me if I've had these hanger outbursts in the past. So that is one thing. Another thing is needing to have coffee to give you energy. Having these stimulants that you haven't got this food fueling you to get consistent levels of glucose to allow you to get good levels of energy. Another sign is that you feel lightheaded if meals are missed. You run up the stairs quickly, you get lightheaded. You get up too quickly, you get lightheaded. These things are massively impacting you. And you need to eat, as we said, for, for energy, but also you feel shaky if you don't eat. Now, what happens is we drop our glucose levels. Now, okay, we have a hormone called glucagon 
that gets released as our levels drop, which is supposed to increase our glucose levels. Now, if that doesn't work, we then release a thing called cortisol, stress hormone. And the prime function of cortisol is to boost our glucose levels. We need glucose to fuel the brain. We need glucose to give that brain the fuel to function. If not, you're going to get brain fog. You're going to have poor memory. You're going to get blurred vision and all these different things. But what happens as well is if we still don't have good adrenal function, we then get shaky. That is your body releasing a stress hormone neurotransmitter epinephrine, which is instantly stressful. That's when we get shaky. That's when we need to eat. And that happens a lot. We are putting more stress on our body. So if this has happened to you day in, day out, do something about it. Please like, just love yourself enough to do something about it. You might find as well, if you've got hyperglycemia, that you get anxious very much. You want to do something about it, but what have you got to change? Who have you got to become in order to improve this? That do something sooner rather than later because it's only going to get potentially worse. Then we look into further down the line. We've looked into hyperglycemia. We then get into insulin resistance. And this is where insulin, which is very, very much where it wants to grab this glucose, take it into the cell, have a transporter to take it through the actual layer of the outside layer, the phospholipid bilayer of the cell. You don't need to know the science to get into the cell to help you create energy called adenosine triphosphate, ATP, and so on. Don't need to go into that. Just know that we need to have the right levels of insulin. Too much, we take too much into the cell. Too little, we don't take enough. But what happens is when we push too much glucose into our body, into our blood, eventually it becomes tired. And we don't release enough. Our beta cells don't release enough insulin to actually grab that glucose and take it in to do what it needs to do. So it becomes what we call insulin resistant. And it is one of the signs that if you continue doing what you do, you are pretty certainly on the course of becoming diabetic, type 2 diabetic. I don't say this is scare tactic. It is the truth. So if you are seeing any of these signs, like, again, feeling fatigued after eating, like you need to have a nap or you need to have coffee after eating because you feel fatigued, that's something which we need to look into. Maybe that you're always tired. You just don't feel like you have energy. That is one of the big, big things that people with insulin resistance go through. Or you're always hungry. You just don't feel satiated after eating. And then we have cravings for sweets, but always need more. That chocolate bar doesn't cut it anymore. So then you need another one. And before you know it, you're having to have so many sweets. You're just constantly like tipping up and tipping up and tipping up the sugar barrel into your mouth. And again, having the sweets after meals. One things I see a lot, one of the things I see a lot in society, and it's it's looking like, and I do a lot of people watching, and I don't say this in a judgmental way, but like I'll see things where, um, oh, I see people's glutes are out or hips are out of line or something like that. Not to like point it out to them, it's just I can see like the way they're walking and their glutes are tight, so like their feet are pointing out. But one of the things we see is that their waist are larger than their hips. So if like you see like, I used to have like muffin tops and I used to hate that and in the mirror and all this sorts of thing. But if you are suffering from your waist being larger than your hips, chances are you have some level of insulin resistance. And if you cannot drop weight, you've tried everything, every diet under the sun, that's when there could be some sign of insulin resistance. It could be that you need to go to the toilet more. You literally can't go half an hour without needing a wee. Could be that you need to drink more water. You just don't feel like your first is being clenched. It could be that you just have more aches and pains. But those biggest signs, I would say, is constantly feeling tired, not able to drop weight, and just constantly hungry and, and craving more sweets. So if you are seeing these signs, hyperglycemia, insulin resistance, do something about it. One of the quickest things I can suggest is to make sure you're getting enough protein in through the day. Make sure you're getting enough meat, some dairy, eggs, whatever source it is. Maybe you're supplementing with protein or this, but don't go and do fasting because that's going to be detrimental for you at this point. It may help your glucose levels further down the line when we've got some level of um, consistency around them and control around them, 
But don't go into doing the fasting side of things straight away. Work on building up to that. Get your protein in throughout the day. Look at routine. Look at making sure. Chances are you're waking through the night if you've got poor blood glucose management. But do something about it. Because until you change that, it's only going to get worse. Because chances are the lifestyle you're in right now has caused that. So unless we do something to adjust that, and it's my job to help someone be able to manage their lifestyle and support that lifestyle without changing that straight away to get to the point to then allow their body to help them further down the line, if that makes sense. So actually like, well, you don't want to change your routine or you're too busy and this sort of thing. Well, okay, let's support your body whilst you're doing that to then give you more capacity, give you more brain function, give you more energy so you get more done in less time as a result and you actually feel better for it and less stress, more resilient. If you need help with that, drop me a message and we can chat, we can get on a call and just to see how we can help you further with your health. But honestly, if you're seeing any of these signs of poor blood glucose management, do something about it, especially the hanger one. Like, no one's nice to be around when they're hangry.